How can I avoid blurriness when the crown margin is subgingival? The second question is also related to the model's crown scanning. The first question addresses contact areas, and the second question will address how to accurately scan margins and reveal scan data. Actually, this was a question asked a while ago, but it's a really good question, so I want to go over it today in depth. In the post, this gentleman asked about the blurry crown margin. As he said, the buckle margin is clearly outlined on the scan image, but the parallel margin is located deeper and appears blurry. So, he was wondering if the blurriness would affect any clinical difference in the final result. This may be a concern that many of you have, myself included. So, let's think about why this phenomenon occurs and see what we can do to avoid this. Now we are looking at a case where a blurry margin showed up during a model's crown scan at our clinic. I have observed that these blurry sections appear more frequently among those who are newer to scanning, whereas it appears less when someone who experienced performed the scan. So let's ask our scan expert Chen. Chen, why do you think this blurry phenomenon occurs? First, blur is a cause when the Operator does not sufficiently perform rolling motion on the margin area. However, if the margin is deep, we cannot be avoid the blurring data no matter how hard we try. This is not because the step are unskilled, but is the problem with the given skin environment. Oh, I totally agree with you. Rolling motion is clearly an important technique and there are differences in skill level between staff for sure. From a technical aspect, turning on HD scan mode and scanning the same object from various angles makes the data more clear. However, the sub margin will always be hard to scan regardless of how experienced the person scanning is. For example, in the case of the supra margin located on a dental model, Clean data can be obtained without any special scanning technique, but these results rarely happen in practice. In reality, scanning is not that easy. So, we have a solution in the form of a video. Let's have a watch. The blurry margin? Where does it come from? It was asked if the blurry margin has any clinical difference on the final results. In our opinion, there are several reasons for why blurry margins may appear. As we discussed, the blurry margins could result from inexperience in scanning, but the biggest problem is attributed to a difficult scanning environment, such as deep margins. Now, let's find out together how to scan a crown with a deep margin. We have narrowed down the causes for the blurry margins into three main culprits. Let's talk about culprit number one. Let's simulate the situation of scanning the deep margin through this diagram. We can immediately notice the main obstacle in the picture, which is the soft tissue undercut. No matter how much rolling motion is attempted, the scanning light goes straight, so it is difficult for it to reach the shade area hidden by the soft tissue undercut. In this situation, the margin scan data cannot be sufficiently obtained and will appear blurry and ambiguous. If the dental technician uses this blurry data to make the final prosthesis, the margin gets set incorrectly, and a crown with an ill-fitted margin will be produced. The best way to prevent this first culprit is to create a crown with a supra-gingival margin, because this will completely remove the possibility of the soft tissue undercut. As we well know, in the case of the supra-gingival margin, the scanning light is not obstructed, so scan data with clear margins can be more easily obtained most of the time. However, a supra-gingival margin is not suitable in all cases, and especially in cases where deep sub-gingival caries previously existed. The formation of a sub-gingival margin may be required. In this case, we would recommend scanning after using a provisional restoration for around one to two weeks. I want to show you the reference article that inspired me. 
the author modified the provisional restoration margin by adding flowable resin to better the environment for scanning, allowing more light to enter, which resulted in a more clean scan. So this is the method that I like to use, and it has helped me overcome the blurry issue in sub-gingival margins. Otherwise, we can perform a gingivectomy around the crown margin to remove the soft tissue undercut. I like to use a portable diode laser to perform gingival trimming because, as the name suggests, it's portable, so it's always ready for when I need to scan. Even though this is less invasive than conventional electrosurgery instruments, some patients still feel it's a bit invasive, so I use this only for necessary areas. My methods involves trying my best to insert the retraction cords first, evaluating the soft tissue undercut using a photo mirror, and then deciding if laser gingival trimming is really necessary. If so, I will carefully perform this in only the essential select areas. We believe that the second culprit is moisture, as seen in my diagram. The margin surface could be moistened by gingival crevicular fluid or saliva within the oral cavity. This can distort the scan data by causing the scanning light to reflect in different directions. Think about how our face is reflected by the water surface in a pond. Saliva can be controlled through the cotton roll isolation method or suction, but this cannot be done with gingival crevicular fluid. The buildup of gingival crevicular fluid is unavoidable if scanning takes a long time. Therefore, in order to minimize scanning chair time, we need to move quickly as if trying to complete a timed game mission. So we set some rules to follow at our clinic to control the moisture issue as much as possible. After performing a pre-scan in advance, we can prepare for the final scan by trimming the data of the target area. Once we have the patient biting down on the gauze, we can then approach with the mindset of processing the target as quickly as possible, like an assassin going in for the kill and fleeing the scene. 2. If an assistant is available, ask for help. If an assistant helps with retraction and moisture control, a good environment can be maintained during the scanning procedure, and the operator is able to use both hands for scanning. Using two hands makes it easier to control scanner movement, so it is especially advantageous to use a rolling motion, and scanning can be completed more easily and accurately. 3. Use this magic item. This is what Dr. Kim introduced to us. A dry surface can be obtained by applying a hemostatic agent called dry Z to the gingival margin and applying pressure with a cotton ball for about two minutes. In particular, we always use this item because it almost perfectly inhibits the flow of crevicular fluid, which cannot be done by other moisture control methods. If you follow these three rules, you will be able to complete the scanning mission in a dry state and obtain clearer margins. The third culprit is related to the second one, moisture. But this time, the distortion is caused by light reflection from the wettened retraction cord. Over time, the cord absorbs gingival crevicular fluid, retains this moisture, and expands in size. In this case, the swelled cord can obscure the margin border, and light will be reflected by moisture in the cord, definitely resulting in a blurry effect. So, properly inserting the cords is an important factor, which relies not only on technical skill, but also on the selection and combination of cord types. My method involves inserting two cords at the same time and scanning without removing them. Therefore, the suppressed fluid does not suddenly rise to the margin surface. I prefer to use the combination of cord number double zero and zero together. When we use this combination, the second cord can be located at the same level as the gums, and you may worry that it may not be distinguishable from the margin but the scanner can tell colors apart unlike the stone model, so the technician has no problem distinguishing the margins, even if they are at the same height. However, the important thing to keep in mind is that if you leave the cord inserted for too long, it will absorb moisture and swell like a sponge. Therefore, as emphasized earlier, it is necessary to complete the scan mission as quickly as possible after inserting the cords. A video of Dr. Zhang preparing a crown and Chen scanning will provide additional tips to understand how to overcome the deep margin issue. Let's have a look. Crown preparation is a really important step, 
so Dr. Jang spends quite a bit of time making sure the margin is at the desired level. To do this, he first designates where the margin level should be using a club-shaped burr. After establishing the margin depth, he likes to use the electric handpiece set at a low speed to reduce the axial walls while maintaining the initial depth. In this way, although it's a bit more time-consuming, it definitely creates a better scanning environment in the subsequent steps. Chen places the utmost importance on the scanning environment, which includes having all the scanning items ready to go, having well-trimmed scan data, and even making sure staff are on standby to help. After everything is set up, only then does she start the final scan for modelist crowns. You can see how smoothly she performs her scanning movement using a rolling motion to ensure the margins can be scanned from various angles. In this way, she can get the best scan results, minimizing the chance of blurry margins. Blurry margins, three culprits, and how to resolve them. This is a summary of the three possible causes for blurry margins. The blurry effect introduces uncertainty into the crown manufacturing process and will have a negative impact on the final crown result. Therefore, we must prevent or minimize the blurry effect. I want to reiterate that if you feel you are having a hard time getting clear margins on the day of crown preparation, there is no need to obsess over doing the scan on the same day. It's totally okay to schedule another appointment for scanning and you will more easily get accurate data for sure. This video outlined these three causes and their respective solution. We hope this video gave you confidence in scanning modelist crowns. This answers question number two.